It's so great. It's a big honor to be here with you. Uh, such a legend. And uh, I want to ask you first, where, what are you doing nowadays with all the pandemic, all COVID? Are you, are you staying at home? How's your schedule? I can walk between the airwaves and I can avoid the pandemic. But the truth is I'm mostly at home. I spend more, more time with my wife or, or with my daughter or son when they're, when they're nearby or in town. That's great. I want to ask you, what's your method to crack games? I mean, uh, we know these classics, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, they have uh, patterns, they have ways of beating the game or playing the game. Uh, how do you, how were you able to find those patterns in the first place? A number of things. First of all, some of them are very obvious to anybody. I mean, I have a very good memory of attention. Whenever I would play, all the way back to when I was a kid, whenever I would play and I would die, I wanted to know why. Why? I didn't go, oh, gee, that's too bad. No, why? It was my fault. I had to correct it. And if I could understand why it happened, I could stop it from happening in the next game. And so it was a long, slow process. I would take, you know, two steps forward and I slip back, two forward and flip back. It's a long, slow road of delayed gratification. We're talking your first record was in 82, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. And we're in 2020, watch, uh, but you're still going strong. Uh, uh, on my back, there's a six hour video of you playing Pac-Man in 2019. I mean, uh, reflexes uh, ha haven't aged for you. You're still in the same shape we, we saw you uh, <laughs> all those years ago. How is that possible? I, I'm a firm believer, if you are immobile, if you're not moving, if you're not constantly pushing or wanting to grow, that is so detrimental in every way, mentally, physically. So I continue to push forward all the time, no matter what. All this new attention of classic gaming is like waves that they, 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 they go away a little bit and then, then they come very strong. And you, you were responsible for a big comeback of classic gaming when you achieved the perfect score. Uh, why do you think those games are so important to our hearts. Uh, why do they fuel these emotions once uh, and again and again and again? When video games came out, I mean, they were all the rage and it was what everybody wanted. I always say it was like a new car. Everybody talked about it. And as time went on, the interest waned. But then after 20 years, once again, it's a classic. It's you know, it, it has a history and people talk about it and they want it, um, again, just like a classic car. And what I believe happens is now that you're 20 years older at the time and older yet now, what you enjoyed as a kid, what you, what fueled you and fueled your passion, now you're in an arcade or a barcade and it's behind you. It's right there. You're amongst friends. Now you have money in your pocket. You're enjoying yourself. You can turn around and you can play and you can share your pastimes, just like a bunch of guys uh, from high school or college might get together on the weekend and they might play football or they might play softball. Um, they relive their passion. I think every one of us is simply reliving a passion that we enjoyed so much as a kid. And you relive it and you enjoy it even to this day. En 1982, el joven Billy Mitchell estableció un récord que se mantuvo inquebrantable por 18 años. Billy, que en ese momento tenía 17 años, consiguió 874.300 puntos en Donkey Kong, el arcade sensación de Nintendo. Para ese entonces, ya era toda una personalidad dentro del mundo de los videojuegos. Hasta la revista Life organizó una producción fotográfica en la que posó junto a otros pro players. Todo eso pasó hace, escucha bien, 38 años. Pero el trayecto de Mitchell por el camino de los récords no se detuvo ahí. El 3 de julio de 1999, impulsado por el desafío del canadiense Rick Fotherhill, Billy volvió a tomar el joystick y consiguió 3.333.360 puntos en Pac-Man. La puntuación perfecta, la más alta que se puede conseguir porque el juego directamente no tiene más niveles y comienza a fallar. Tanta repercusión tuvo el hecho que Namco lo nombró como el jugador del siglo. How happy are you that all the controversy regarding your 
your Guinness World Records has been settled? Um, well, it was a tremendous amount of work. And what I enjoy doing most is going to shows and pushing and advocating, trying to promote esports, competitive gaming, the people who do it, and bring them the recognition they deserve. No, no different than the guys who play basketball and all the recognition they deserve. And that's what I enjoy doing most. And the necessity to go back to gather all this information, the time mm -hmm. it took, and to sit back down and redo the scores that I did before in the live venue as I did before. I think that that knocked me off of the ambassadorship that I enjoy so much. Yeah. So I'm very relieved that I can go back to doing that. But again, as we alluded to earlier, it's a little difficult because I've made all these friends along the way that I probably would not have made, like through Twitch. So now I have to balance doing what I say I enjoy so much, the ambassadorship and going to shows, and balancing the friendship that I've made. Um, so in one sense, it's a tremendous relief, as you asked me. But on the other hand, it's, uh, it brings me a greater workload. Um, but it's not something I'm afraid of. En 2018, el libro Guinness de los Records eliminó los registros de Mitchell por una supuesta investigación que concluía que la placa en la que había logrado los puntajes de Donkey Kong estaba modificada. Billy impulsó una nueva investigación que determinó que efectivamente no cometió en ningún momento ningún acto fraudulento o fuera de las reglas. Así lo comunicó Craig Glenday editor jefe del libro Guinness, quien reestableció las marcas en junio de este año. Patterns, uh, records, uh, everyone asks you that. What haven't we known or talked about Billy Mitchell that's uncovered yet? What's the, the that level that no one has seen? Wow, that's a good question. And I, I won't kid you. I mean, you absolutely uh, hit me off guard. Um, but people always ask the same thing. They ask about the past. And then they ask, oh, so what's in the future? Um, I have a tremendous passion for history. I truly do. That's something that I share with different people, even in the gaming world, those of us who share passion, when it's at night and it's after the show. After the convention and we're sitting in the hotel room, we often talk about history. But what many people would not know about me is the passion that I have for pushing forward, for drive, for success. It goes far beyond me. Um, you know, each one of my children, you know, who's graduated from college, each one of them is absolutely in the position that they dreamed of as they were leaving high school. And I, I put a lot of pressure on myself that I would find it such a failure if they didn't reach that point because they have the potential. If they didn't have the potential, well, then they'd have the potential for something else. But I take so much of my energy and I pour it into the people that are around me. Um, there's different things, there's different charities that I support. So I do have a tremendous amount of passion outside of gaming. I won't lie to you, gaming, it sounds, it sounds silly coming to me, but gaming is a much smaller part of my life than, than you would imagine. Did you ever think those passions would make you famous or known in Argentina, for example, where we are based? Did you, could you ever predict that? Um, well, I don't want to miss this point. As, as you may know, I, I don't really do interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, you contacted me and, and um, I'm sorry, please forgive me. The usual answer would have been no answer. I, I just, I don't do interviews. Um, but first of all, this seemed fun. But more importantly, um, I wanted to do this because I really love Argentina because my father-in-law, he's from Buenos Aires. Really? He's actually, yeah, he's actually from Lincoln, if you know where Lincoln is. Yes, yes, of course, in the province of Buenos Aires. Yeah. Right. So when this was brought to my attention by my son, um, it gained my it gained my respect immediately. And I thought, yeah, maybe we should do that one. So that's what brought brought you to my attention. How how's your Spanish? As as you have part of your family that's from Argentina. You speak Spanish? Más o menos. No demasiado. Y usted habla demasiado rápido para mí, porque mí no, no, Pero, mi, mi, mi pendejo en, en, en español. No, está perfecto. Yo veo que tú hablas muy bien. Podríamos haber hecho esta nota, Billy Mitchell, toda en castellano. 
My, my wife just yelled at me. She said, like, I, I insulted myself. If you ever come to Argentina, even though you have people in Lincoln, uh, making asado for you barbecue, we can, we can, we can fix you here in Buenos Aires too. Right. So, um, I, you know, my real job and what I do for a living is, you know, I manufacture hot sauce. So when you, there's no place in the world where you eat meat like Argentina. Yeah. And there's nothing hot sauce goes better on the meat. So. It's been a real honor. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time and the, and the interest on saying yes. And we hope to see you going strong and be on those 20 years. Let's see you beat another Pac-Man record. I appreciate it. I'll, I, I, hope, I hope to speak to you again. I truly do.